recording that. All right, everyone, welcome to the Ocean Lab special live broadcast straight from the super remote waters of San Ignacio Lagoon, Mexico. Today, we'll embark on a journey to discover the awe-inspiring world of one of the ocean's most majestic creatures, the gray whale. Special thank you to Mike Lever and the entire Nautilus team for making these programs possible. I'm Kylie, your moderator today on this exciting adventure, coming to you live from the pristine coast of Baja, California. Each year, this incredible lagoon serves as a sanctuary to the magnificent gray whales during their annual 12,000 mile round trip migration between the Arctic and Mexico. And here in the protected waters of the San Ignacio Lagoon, they find refuge to breed, to give birth, and to nurture their young. We're going to meet up with some pretty incredible researchers today who are out right now on the lagoon as we speak to learn even more about gray whale biology, ecology, and learn what it looks like to be a marine biologist. If we're lucky, we might even get to see a few whales. Just a reminder that we're coming to you live from a very remote part of Mexico, so if the video looks a little bit lower quality than your favorite TV shows, that's why. Uh, we welcome your questions. Just submit them by using the Q&A icon, which is at the bottom of your screen, and we'll try to answer as many of them as we can. Uh, I'll turn it over to our host right now, Dr. Chris Lowe of CSU Long Beach, and our resident marine mammal expert, Dr. Gwen Goodman Lowe. How's the lagoon looking today, guys? Hi, Kylie. The lagoon is awesome. It's a beautiful day and we are completely surrounded by whales. So I'm Dr. Chris Lowe. I'm a professor of marine biology and I run the shark lab at Cal State Long Beach and I study sharks. And I really don't know anything about whales, but I'm here with my wife, Dr. Gwen Goodman Lowe, who is a whale expert. We also have with us today our naturalist, Scarlett, who's been working here for a couple of years and she's gonna help us out. And our boat captain, Adrian. So Adrian knows how to find the whales, how to put us with the whales, and we're gonna learn a lot about whales today. So the Baja Peninsula is where we're located, halfway down on the Pacific side. And it was formed about five to 10 million years ago. As the Pacific plate has moved north, the North American plate has gone underneath it, and it pushed up the Baja Peninsula, creating the Sea of Cortez on one side, and we're on the Pacific side. There are three large lagoons right in the middle of the Baja Peninsula that become these really important lagoons, not just for whales, but many other species. So when, why do the gray whales love these lagoons? Wow, that's a great intro. So the gray whales love these lagoons because they are shallow and relatively warm. So the mom whales come down here to give birth every year when they're pregnant. And they do that in these shallow, warm lagoons. And that's a safe spot for their babies, which we call calves. So they come down here for, for giving birth, but also um, the ones that are not giving birth are going to breed and mate with a male so that they can then be pregnant and come back next year to give birth. So really warm and shallow lagoons for this very special, important part of their life. So gray whales are mammals like us. That's right. So what makes them a mammal? Oh, wow. So they are mammals, which means that they have, um, they nurture or, or nourish their young with something called mammary glands. Woo, oh, right oh, there, we got some cells. And, wow. and um, they have a hair or fur uh, for whales that's happened when they're in the embryo. Um, they uh, give have live birth. So a baby pops out just like us, no eggs. They have internal reproduction and they breathe the air. Oh, we, we got another one on the outside. We're moving over. 
<laughs> yeah, so that's what a mammal is. And then a marine mammal is not really a, a, a classification, but it's more of a lifestyle. So marine mammals are animals that make their living in the sea. So they include whales, dolphins, seals, sea lions, manatees, dugongs, and actually the polar bear. Even though the polar bear lives on land 99% of its time, it actually gets all of its food from the ocean. So a polar bear is also considered to be a marine mammal. Very cool. So these animals, I was touching the water, and it's kind of cool. Like uh, if I was in here for an hour, I'd probably be freezing. You would be. Now my body temperature is 98.6 like most humans. Right. How do they stay warm when they're in this cold water? Well, first of all, marine mammals and these whales have a body temperature that's almost the same as ours. It's about the same as ours between 98 and 100. So they do have a problem staying warm. Well, they would have a problem staying warm. They have a very large blubber layer and blubber is kind of like fat, but, but has more... Um, more uh, arteries and veins going through it so it's it's a little bit stiffer has some um has some protein not cartilage but so, like some support in it and that is a really good insulative layer so it's like having a winter coat on all the time a real thick winter coat so they're using that blubber as insulation yeah but they don't eat when they're here that's right so where are they eating um, so they 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 get the their their energy from that blubber layer that's stored, and they kind of metabolize that down. Oh, we have a whale! I think coming under the boat. Yep, here it comes! Here it comes! It's right underneath the boat. So they metabolize that blubber layer. It's hanging right by the back. And they get the energy from that. So so they are feeding up in Alaska, eating lots and lots of food. They store it in their blubber. Right. They migrate all the way down here. And are they snacking along the way? Uh, sometimes they can snack, but typically they- Oh, right there, right there. Oh, wow, right yeah. there, yeah. That's the head right there. Wow. That's the head of the whale. And you can see the pectoral, the, the yeah, arm. Yeah, it's like an arm, it's the arm flipper. Yeah. And the back, and you can see oh, that- coming up. It's coming up. It's coming up. Yeah. So yeah, so they 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 don't really snack that much. They just are, are living off that blubber it's, layer. It is. I mean, oh, yeah, there it goes. There it's going to blow. Goes. It's going to take a breath of air. Woo! Yeah, so I got that's some about... fish. Oh, that's nice. Oh, oh, nice. So what, what is that? <laughs> so that's uh, when the whale is coming up. It's got to take a breath. But first, it has to release that carbon dioxide, like when you breathe out. So what that blow is, there's they're actually breathing out. And um, it's got some water vapor in it, moisture. Oh, look, 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 so All right, we're gonna get splashed. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they're breathing out, and and when they breathe out, it's very forceful, and it picks up some mucus and oil from the top of the head, and so that's what that whale spout is. So it's a little bit oily, a little bit mucusy, but once they breathe out, they're taking the breath real quick. You don't even see it. So it's a, a breath out and a breath in real fast. So they're taking in the oxygen for the air, and they're expelling the CO two just right. like we do. Right. And that spray is excess water and a little bit of oil. Yeah. So that is, not. is that why yeah. my skin is so soft yeah, now? Because I've very, been very I've been sneezed on by a whale. Yeah, yeah. You should market that. I should. I really should. <laughs> okay, so let's get back to blubber. So the blubber is insulation. Yeah. It's like a jacket, like yeah. you're saying. It but it's also like a lunchbox that they carry. Right. And that's gonna feed them during this long migration down here. And they're 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 not really eating in here either, right? Right. So they're just they maybe snack, 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 snack right, a little bit. Right. But most of that energy is used for what when they get here? Is used for, well, if it's the female, she's using it to make milk to feed her young. Okay. The other ones are just using it for energy. For yeah. mating yeah, and all mating, the other things they got to do. Exists. Yeah. Okay. So rolling over. Yeah. So now the moms, they come in here, the pregnant moms come in here. Where do they go to give birth? They go to the back part of the lagoon, which is more shallow and more warm, and that's where they give birth. And when they do that, because remember, they're air breathers, they have to kind of stay towards the surface so they can breathe air. And so they usually have a little helper, a non-related auntie that helps them with the birth. Because within 15 seconds of being born, the, the calf, the baby calf has to be come to the surface and take a breath of air. And within a short amount of time, 30 minutes to an hour, the baby can start to learn how to swim. It can actually, you know, use its muscles. And But that auntie is there to help them. So that... Blubber layer also helps with that, right? Right. So we got feeding, we have keeping warm, and we also have keeping buoyant or staying to the surface when they're resting. Yeah. 
So if we pour oil on top of water, it floats. That's Why? Right. Because it's less dense. Okay. And so is blubber. So blubber is less dense than than um, than the water in our cells. And so that's why it helps keep them buoyant. So it helps keep them up as well. Yeah. So now the mom has got to feed the baby. So the one the ones you really get to eat all the time here are, are the, the babies. Young, the babies right. eat all yeah. the time. And what do they eat? They're eating mom some milk. Milk. Yeah. Or because they're a mammal. Because they're a mammal. Okay. So they're feeding on mom and mom's giving them milk. Very rich milk. So how much milk does a baby eat a day? Something like 80 gallons of milk a day. 80 gallons of milk. 80 gallons of milk. And the milk you eat. Is it low fat? Is it skim milk? It's really fat. So, uh, so the milk that you drink when you have your cereal or your coffee is probably 2%. And then full fat milk for humans that we eat is 4%. And their milk fat is between 53 and 60% fat. Wow. So, oh. right there. so that is a huge amount of energy. That's a lot of energy, a lot of fat, a lot of calories. So how fast does a calf grow? They can grow up to nine pounds an hour. Wait, nine pounds an hour? Nine pounds an hour, something like 100 pounds a day they can put on. And they start out, they're only 2,000 pounds when they're born, only 2,000 pounds. Only 2,000 pounds. And about 15 feet long. And by the time they leave here, they're 19 feet long and many, many more thousand pounds. Wow, so that's a big baby. That's now, a big now, baby. You know, if you look at them underwater, their mouths, they really don't have lips. No. So how do they drink the milk? Oh, we got a whale. Oh, we have a whale over there. So the way they drink the milk is they get close to the mom's mammary glands, and she actually uh, forcefully expels the milk into their mouths because the babies don't have lips, so they can't really, like, suckle like a human can or like a cat or a dog. So she just uses muscles and expels it out. So that must be like a really thick milkshake. Yeah, really thick milkshake. Ooh, okay, so so she's using her blubber, right, to convert to milk, right, to feed her baby. That's right. And that baby's growing nine pounds an hour. That's gonna be like forty or fifty thousand calories per day. Right. You know how many Big Macs that is? That would be a lot of Big Macs. Holy smokes! Yeah. Okay, no diet for the babies. No diet for the babies. They need to get as fat and strong and big as they can before that long migration, which we didn't talk about the distance that they migrate. Yeah, so so they do a, a very long migration. Right. right, they have actually the longest migration of any marine mammal on earth and their migration is between five and 7,000 miles one way. So every year they're migrating round trip between 10 and 14,000 miles. So that is a long, long way to travel. And that's why the calves need to have so much fat and energy in order to get back up to the feeding grounds. Right, right. So remember, they don't really feed down here. They only feed in Alaska because that's where their main prey are. And that's where they, they put on all that fat. So so they fatten up up there. They come back down here. They lose some of their blubber. But fortunately, the water here is a lot warmer right. than it is in Alaska. That's right. Although still chilly, but yes. So they're yeah. wearing their summer coats here that's and right. they wear their winter. They make their winter coats up there. That's right. Okay. Yeah. And another thing is we didn't really um, talk about the blowholes, but those blowholes, you see it right there where that blow comes up. That's actually their nostrils. And their nostrils have migrated to the top of their head. And the reason for that is you can see when they swim, when they come up and they swim, you can see that they don't have to lift their entire head out of the water. And that makes them much more efficient swimmers. If they can just put like the very top of their head out of the water, get rid of that CO2 and take a breath in. They can just do that while they're swimming without having to put their massive entire head out of the water. Now, when they come up, we'll see their, they'll roll they right roll. next to us. And we can see their eye and it's yeah. right above their mouth. Yeah, a very large eye. And then sometimes they do this thing called spy hopping. That's right. Which I know we'll see a yeah, minute. probably see spy hopping. Why do they spy hop? Well, the theory is that they're just looking around to see who's what other whales are there, maybe people. Oh, right there, yeah. We might even be able to see this one's eye. Um, and we'll, when they're oh, there's the loop, loop, loop. when they're migrating, they do that to look at the um, the shoreline to see where they are on the migratory route. Wow, right there, so close. Sometimes they come up and they let you scratch them and pet them and really? and touch their their backs. Yeah. So, oh, I think it's coming up. Yeah, and you can see all the different markings. So every individual has a different pattern. You can see that. You'll see the white on the, the, the black 
uh, oops, they all have different patterns and you can actually tell individual oh, whales. Oh, oh. That was big bubble. That was big bubble. You can tell individual whales by the by the marks on there. Wow. Oh, look at that right there. Look. Oh wow. I, hope I think it's coming not, up. I hope that's not gas. No, yeah, okay. I hope it's not gas either. Oh, it's comes. Or he. Yeah. yeah, we don't know actually. How do you tell the difference between males and females? Well, it's really hard. Um, females are larger than males in the gray whale, but unless you were right next to them and you had two right, right next to each other, it would be very hard to tell. But you can tell by looking on the underside of their body because the females have one long slit for the reproductive tract and then two little slits on either side for those mammary glands. Because they're a mammal. Because they're a mammal. Ah, uh, gotcha. And the males have two short slits, one in the front for the reproductive, towards the middle of the oh, body. There's a the tail. There's a tail for the reproductive organs and then one for the uh, excretory organs. So you can tell, but you really have to be able to see the underside of the body for oh, the most part. There's the head right there. Yep. It's toying with us. Yeah. So, okay. oh, yeah. So the I, I saw some these little yellow, right. yellowish uh, things on their head. Yeah. What are those things? So they have two types of hitchhikers that live on their bodies, and one type of hitchhiker are are barnacles, and they actually have a a species of barnacle that is specific just to them. And that's called the gray whale barnacle, and that gray whale barnacle. Um, lives here in the lagoons and um, when they're when the barnacles are babies they're floating around in the water and then they get a cue to settle down and they will settle on the gray whales and they'll grow on the gray whales themselves and so we know that the barnacles are about an inch to inch and a half long when they're adults so we know that a, a gray whale that has an, uh, the, the adult barnacles on it is at least a year old it takes about a year for those barnacles to grow. Oh, a spy hop. See that? Oh, yeah, in the oh, distance. Cool. Yes. So, so if it's totally smooth, it's got to be a newborn. We know it's a newborn. Yeah. Okay. And then the other hitchhikers are these little kind of crab like things called whale lice, not like the ones oh, that are in okay. the air. Right. At their own little type, it's called they're called whale lice, and they can get transferred from the mom to the baby. So newborns can actually have the whale lice on them already, but not the barnacles until the barnacles settle on there. So, and both of them live on there. Um, the barnacles don't really hurt the whales at all, um, but they, they benefit because they get water movement yeah. and they're feeding on plankton. And then the whale lice are good for the, the whales because what they do is they feed on dead skin and kind of injured skin and they'll pick off that skin and they'll help clean off the whale. So they're really beneficial to the whale. Oh, that's very cool. And they're just hitchhikers. And they're just hitchhikers, but that's how they get those white marks on them. Um, they get it from rubbing on the sand and, and things like that, but they can also rub some of the barnacles off and then and then you can actually see the the, the spot where the barnacle used to be. So that's how they get that modeled kind of uh, uh, coloration pattern. But but the babies already have some pigmentation and, and I think that the researchers here can identify individuals by unique markings. That's right. That's what we were talking about. Very, yep, very cool. yep. So they can actually see when a whale goes by, oh, that's Scarface or, oh, that's, you know, Sally. So now these whales, they're really you know, the spy hop. The spy hop. That was great. <laughs> so they're mainly, they're really one of the more coastal whales, right? Very coastal, right. And that's because they feed on in the mud in the bottom. And so there's another spy hop. So if they were they were you know feeding out in the middle of the ocean, it would be too deep for them to get the the sediment or the muds um, because they're feeding on little amphipods, which are little crab-like things down in the mud, and they feed on little worms that are in tubes and things like that. So they really like to dive down and suck in a whole bunch of mud in their mouths, and then what they do is they use that baleen, those plates that come down, and they force the water out through that those baleen plates and they take their tongue and they scrape off the inside of their baleen and then they swallow the prey. So what what is baleen? Yeah, so baleen is um baleen is kind of like our fingernails. It's a flexible plate, but it comes down in like in uh, vertical plates that are right next to each other and then it has a fringe on it and it's it's relatively flexible um and it's kind of like uh, old fashioned plastic like before we had plastic in the world um, people actually use those baleen plates to make things like uh, the little um, the, the ribs that went in umbrellas and um, corsets, which women used to wear to make their waist smaller. So um, so that's what the baleen is. But remember that not all whales have baleen and not all um, not all uh, uh, baleen whales have teeth. So right. no baleen whales have okay. teeth. So there's two groups of whales. 
There's the toothed whales, which also includes the dolphins, and they all have teeth. Right. And then there's the baleen whales, and there's only about 16 species right. of those, and they only have baleen. They have no teeth. And the okay. baleen only comes down from the upper jaw. They have no baleen on the lower jaw, so it just hangs down from the upper jaw. Very cool. So yeah. it's just a big, giant, like, broom. Yeah, That's... kind of like a big, giant broom. That's right. Yeah. yeah. So the... I guess the, the question I have about baleen whales is that these are bottom feeders, but a right. lot of the other baleen whales aren't, right? That's They're feeding right. in the water column? Right, yeah, they feed in the water column, they feed in deeper waters, and they have, uh, yeah, so they're feeding on other things like small fish, little herring, krill, like blue whales feed on krill. So yeah, they have different types of prey, and because of that, their baleen is different, um, different thicknesses, and and the sieve size is like you could have a big sieve or you can have a little sieve. And because uh, gray whales are feeding on smaller things, the the sieve size is smaller. But the cool thing about gray whales is that they seem to really like to feed on their right side. Really, and they may learn that from their moms. We don't really know. The way we know about that right-sided thing is that if the if a whale dies and it washes up on shore, we can see that the baleen on the right side is all worn down from that sand. And so it's a lot shorter on the right side than it's on the wrong side, on the left side. So you can actually tell like what side the, the gray whale likes to feed on by the length of the baleen. So, but if we compare that with something like a blue whale, mm-hmm. right? The blue whales are like, they should be called big gulpers. Right. Because they just take a huge gulp. Right. And then screen out all that. Water. That's right. Yeah. So, and so humpbacks too. Humpbacks have huge throats that they can take in, you know, hundreds of gallons of water at one time and their throat expands and then they push it out through the baleen, use their tongue to scrape it off and then swallow. So gray whales are tea eaters yeah or dainty eaters smaller whales too the blue whale can be up to 110 True. feet long and wow. and um four hundred thousand pounds and gray whales are about 49 feet long and ninety thousand pounds so. okay so we 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 know that the babies are born at about how big 15 feet they're 15, feet, 15 feet and by the right. time they leave this lagoon with their moms about how big are they 19 feet 19. Like, depending so, on the, the whale so they've grown four feet yeah and and a lot of pounds less than a year it's like three months wow yeah okay and then so, about how big when they reach maturity how long um, they reach so maturity? they're mature between six to 12 years old so average like seven or eight years old eight or nine years old and um when they reach maturity they're at the probably the maximum length so so that so it takes them about nine years to get to that maximum length and then how long do they live that's a great question. So um, they live to be somewhere around 55 to 70, but the oldest one they've ever recorded was a little bit over 80. So 80 years old. That's a long life. Yeah, yeah, long absolutely. Life for this migration back and forth and back and forth. Yeah, the older I get, just walking yeah. two miles is exhausting. Exactly. Walking Let up it. the stairs is I hard. Know, right? I know. So these whales really have to be able to be able to <laughs> long distance. they right. in good shape. Yeah. Okay, so the animals that are coming here, um, I understand, like to go to different places. So Scarlet. So Scarlet is our naturalist. She's been working here. Scarlet, how long have you been working in the world? Hi there. Uh, I've been here in San Ignacio for about four seasons. And I work here from January to April. Because that's whale season. That's whale season, okay. but then they come here. That's their winter home. And 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 what could you interested in doing this? Why did you decide to do this? Well, I kind of, I'm really into like the ocean animals. And yes, I'm, I'm actually from Mexico City and I always being interested in these giant animals. And the best spot to do whale watching in Mexico, it's in Baja. Mm, so that's now, why I came here. So gray whales span... Mexico, the U.S., Canada, along their whole migratory route. But Mexico is a really special and important place for them. And it seems like Mexico really cares about the whales. They do a lot to protect them. Yes. So so what do they do here to try to keep the whales safe so that people can come see them but do so safely? So, for example, here in Mexico, we have this, uh, where we are right now, a natural protected area. So these are uh, some fishermen here. Uh, they do well watching. Uh, they have several like rules 
to to protect them, to respect them when we do wall watching. Uh, so yeah, here is San Ignacio, the first sanctuary in Mexico for protection of the whales. So that's what we do here. So for example, you're only allowed to have 16 boats out here at a time, right? Even though there's a lot more boats and each person, each boat is only allowed to be with the whales for 90 minutes. So that's, those are examples of two regulations yes. that we, that you have to abide by here, right? Yes. And this is like a initiative or like the idea from um, the locals, like the captains, for example, that they decided to have these re regulations uh, to have better practices with the whales. That that is because they come right to us. Yes. We don't we don't even have to go to them. They come to us. Yes, yes, yes. How and did they do that? So we don't know exactly why they approach the boats or they pass nearby, but I'm thinking because they are coastal, the great ones, they are coastal whales. Maybe they are more used to, to the traffic of boats. Okay. But here in San Ignacio, they try to like just stay in one place and see them passing by. They kind of feel um, um they get to know the boat, so they kind of get used to. Okay. Yeah, but yeah. also the cat they know. So for example, this one is just passing by here. Uh -huh. uh, so yeah, so boats usually just we are just hanging out in the same place. Look like we are moving, but it's because the currents are taking us yes, out. Yes. So now you've been out here for three years. You get to see all these whales all the time. You get to see all interesting behaviors. So, but you can identify some of the whales by their unique markings. Yes, that's true. So because we saw the whales uh, that they have these white pigmentation, they have like beauty marks. Uh, some of the captains and guides, we are able to get to know some of them. They recognize, we recognize them and even give them names. Like past season, we have one whale. Was kind of curious uh, with the boat. And these well, every time that approach, uh, for some reason, open the mouth. Uh -huh. I was scratching with so, the father. So smiling at everybody. Yes. And also has like certain marks, a uh, certain marks in the body that is like our fingerprints. Mm -hmm. So are unique from each individual. So yes, sometimes we can recognize some individuals here. So... Would you say that a lot of the whales here kind of have personalities? Yes, they are very different. Uh, they are like humans. So we have some like very introvert or extrovert. Uh, imagine like the dogs also, like they have different yeah, yeah. personalities. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Same with the whales. Some are grumpy. Oh, I have, I have. Oh, I have. Yes. Yeah. Some are grumpy, some are happy. Yes. <laughs> and also, for example, we have uh, some extrovert whales, but not all the time they are in the mood to socialize. Right. So they also want some space. They are just like us. So when they're not migrating or when they're not mating or they're not taking care of their babies, how do they rest? So, for example, here in the lagoon, uh, especially the mothers that they are taking care of their babies, uh, we have seen that when we have Calm conditions in the lagoon, that's when they take naps. I'm not a strike of, oh, oh, you nice. would have, sorry. Uh, yeah. so they take yeah. naps. Uh, we have seen that they have a couple of times during the day, maybe 15 minutes. Yeah. Another one. Oh, oh. Another breach. Yes. Oh, so why did they breach? We don't know exactly why, but we think that it could be for mating behavior. Also, maybe there are some theories that maybe they want to get rid of the lies. Yeah. And that, uh, maybe some males, they want to attract attention of females. Uh, they're showing off. Exactly. Yes. So, um, there's my hop right there. Nice. Oh, uh, so after mating is done, and the man, you're telling us that the males and females may go to different lagoons. Ooh. Yes, they go to different oh. lagoons, like because they want to date other yeah. females. Yes, yes. So they want to go just to one lagoon. They will check several lagoons that we have in Baja. So every day they are coming in, going out to different lagoons. Ah, uh, okay. But the pregnant females, they go to the back of the lagoon. They give birth to their babies. They stay. So exactly. So for example, the single ones are the ones that check out other lagoons to to socialize and get to know other single whales. But mothers and babies, will, they will hang out here in the lagoon until the end of the season, that which is around April. Uh, with this, we allow the mothers and babies to get familiarized with the environment. It's like training for the babies. Um, at the end of the season, the babies are with the wool. 
Uh, At the end of the season, these babies are almost with the flipper outside of the lagoon because they are ready for the first uh -huh. journey to go yeah. to Alaska. They're ready to go. So the um yes. oh, there's another wow. small boat. Uh, they're, they're all <laughs> also it's really nice to so because here captains and guides we stay here for three months. Uh -huh. We also are getting to know them how they are more active, uh -huh. or they take naps, right? right? Everything is related. So how strong are the currents, right? the tides? Yeah. So I know there's a group of researchers here every year and they're doing counts of whales. So how many whales did they count yesterday? So yesterday, the census, the sheriff told us that we have 192 single whales. This could be females, this could be males, and eight pairs of mother and babies. Wow. So and that those numbers will change from day to day in the peak, right? Correct. Now, now, when the um as as the oceans warm, climate change is going to have some impacts, right? That's right. It's going to warm the water. That's right. Is that going to affect the whales in some way? It is already affecting the whales. In fact, one of the biggest threats to this population right now is climate change. So starting in around 2019, uh, they started to see a die off of whales. And at the peak in about 2015, the number was 27,000, which they think was about was higher than pre-whaling days. And then in about 2019, they started to have a massive die off. And we're actually down in just what, you know, in years, less than five years, we're, we've decreased in number by 13,000. And that's, they think, a direct effect of climate change because what happens is their food, the food that they eat, eats plankton that lives under the sea ice. And when there's no sea ice, then there's no plankton that feeds their food and then they're starving. Uh, so so they think that the main reason why the numbers have declined by 13,000 in less than four, five years is from climate change. Wow. Yeah. So, but 150 years ago, these animals were in trouble, right? They because were. we hunted them. We did them. So for what purpose? We hunted them almost for, to extinction. So back in the day, 100 years ago or more now, actually, um, we didn't have electricity. So we, we lit our lamps and we heated our homes with oil. And that oil came from whale blubber. So sperm whales, all the, the big whales had... Uh, oh, oh, look at this. So they, um, so they would, they would harpoon the whales and they would... It, they would take the blubber and they would boil it down. They would boil that, boil that blubber down and they would get oil from that. And that's how they heated the homes and, and lit the lamps. So, but in the, in the early days of whaling, um, gray whales weren't the favorite, right? They were not the favorite because their oil was kind of substandard. It was not as, first of all, they, were, they didn't have as much, but also it just wasn't as high quality as, say, the sperm whales and the right whales. And so they were hunted down here in the lagoons. Oh, that's so amazing. That is so amazing. A little bit less than 10 years. And then they said, yeah, th those aren't that great. But then as they hunted out the other whales, they came back. And they started hunting them again, and that's when they that's when they hunted them. But whalers also didn't like these whales because they were kind of rebellious. Mean. Well, would, wouldn't you be? If yeah, you were being stabbed, you would fight back. Yeah, yeah. But they, but they had a nickname, right? They did. Their nickname was Devilfish, and that's because they fought back when they were being harpooned. And then in about 1949, they were protected by the government. And then, of course, in 1972, we had the Marine Mammal Protection Act, so they've been protected ever since then. So, so basically, they were hunted to the verge of extinction. They were on the endangered species list. We protected them. Their populations have come back, but now they're being impacted by climate. That's right. Yeah. And not only climate change, but people in every way. So sure. we have, um, they get entangled in nets because, you know, we have more people. So that means more fishing nets, more fishing traps. And so they're getting entangled in nets. They're, they're affected by pollution. They're affected by the temperature of the water. They're affected because there's no prey. Now, because they're filter feeders, they're filtering things in the water off the bottom. We use plastic. Forever. That's right. So, so they, they, they can ingest plastic as well. In fact, you see plastic in the stomachs of dead gray whales. So it causes them to starve because, you know, they're hungry. So they eat the plastic and um, they don't get the nutrition from it. So... We see that a lot in other whales, especially two whales, but they have seen it, gray whales as well. Wow. So we've done a lot to protect them, but there's more that we can do. Yes. 
lot more that we can do. Okay. We can reduce our use on single-use plastics. Um, we can be more aware of, you know, our solution. Oh, oh it's so cool. So I got another crazy question. These things migrate a long way. They must get really thirsty. What do they, how do they drink? How do they get fresh water? Well, you know, that's a good question. Um, they actually do, do not drink fresh water because there's no fresh water yeah. source. They can't just go up to a river and take a little drink or right. a water fountain. Right. right. So they don't have a water bottle. So um, they actually get their fresh water from their food and they're very efficient at filtering out that water from their food and conserving that water. Oh, a nice one. And their kidneys are very, very efficient at conserving that water. So there's only a few species of marine mammals that actually drink water. Sea otter is one of them and the manatee is the other, but none of the rest of them can drink water. And seals and sea lions that are on the, the on the beach more, they, they all get their fresh water from uh, from metabolic uh, 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 metabolic digestion of sure. their food. So yeah. So now the they all they kind of seem to move in groups and and like other whales, they can they have ears, right? Yeah, they have ears, ear bones way inside their head, inside that blubber, they have ear bones that are real similar to ours. And they're sensing vibrations in the water. So that's how, and, and sound waves, right? Because the sound waves go through that blubber and they can hear that. And then, but they can vocalize a little bit. They they're can not, vocalize. They're not yeah. good singers like right. humpbacks. Not good singers, but they make uh, grunts, whistles. Oh, <laughs> grunts and whistles and like a knocking sound. Um, but they probably don't use that. Like when they're doing this right here, they're thinking about mating. And right. That's probably right. more behavioral, postural. Yeah. yeah. Um, the bubbles, yeah. probably not the not the vocalization. So the moms teach the calves how to speak, so right. to speak, and, and yeah. understand right. so that they can be safe. Yeah. So <laughs> being safe is probably important if you're a baby whale. So what are the predators of gray whales? Well, the predators of gray whales are us. Um, not so much anymore. We still have subsistence hunting in Alaska, but they only take about two whales a year. But the other main predator are actually killer whales, orca. Oh, right. And they like to separate the moms from the babies on the migratory route, and then and then they'll eat part of the baby, not the whole baby, but they'll eat part of it. Or sometimes, if the mom can outlast the orcas, they will. Um, they'll just, you know, they get bored and they move away. Um, but remember that gray whales hunt in packs, right? And so they. Uh, uh, orcas. Uh, sorry, sorry. Yeah. Orcas hunt in packs, and so even though they're a lot smaller than gray whales, they communicate with each other. And then they know, they say, okay, Joe, you go over there and you try to separate them and I'm going to come back from the other side. So they have a big advantage over the gray whales. In the way. Cool. Oh, okay, Kylie, I've probably been hogging all the questions. Are there any questions coming in? Oh my gosh, you guys, you would not believe how many questions we have coming in right now. We love um, questions. It's absolutely insane. Hopefully, um, for those of you submitting questions, we have answered a couple of them as you've sent okay. them. Um, but I do want to take a second and have Gwen and Chris answer some questions that we haven't heard from yet. Um, sure. We'll start generalized. So how many types of whales are there? And are whales the same thing as dolphins? That's a great question. So there are 89 species of whales and dolphins combined. And of those, we have two groups. We have the toothed whales and dolphins, and we have the baleen whales. So the baleen whales, there's no baleen dolphins. There's 16 species of baleen whales. And then the other group, which are the whales and dolphins combined, are the really big, great whales with teeth like sperm whales and things like that. And then the dolphin family, which are smaller, uh, smaller than the great whales. And the orca, the killer whale, is actually the largest dolphin species. That's a great question. I'm sure there's a few others. <laughs> there's so many others. Um, <laughs> let's see. Somebody is asking about if there's any legal protections for whales and marine mammals um, in Mexico. Um, yes. And since the Marine Mammal Protection Act is a U.S. law. Um, we want to know what are they doing in Mexico to protect whales? Oh, so that's a great question for Scarlett. Okay. So, yes, all the whales in Mexico are under protection. We have a norm called 131 that it says, like, the only activity that we can do with whales in Mexico is whale watching. And also we have some sanctuaries like San Ignacio Lagoon and other, um, yeah, like other sanctuaries in, in the Baja. So, yes, they are under protection. Um, so that's what we do here. So if a fisherman accidentally catches a whale, 
they have to let it go, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. They try not to because the whales probably damage their fishing gear. But but they're the fishermen here seem to be really protective of the whales. Yes, really... I mean, actually, it's an example of uh, how to do good practices. Uh, so they also, if, for example, they see one whale with a hasapui, uh, they call the some people to help these whales. Oh, so they actually try to untangle yes. them. That's crazy dangerous, right? They really have to be careful. Yes. So they call some uh, specialized group to do so. Oh, that's great. That's great. These questions are really good. Are there more questions? There's so many more. Um, all right. We have a lot of questions about whale reproduction. Um, so we okay. want to know how whales make their babies. And then um, people are wondering, do the males join in the migration and have a role in caring for these babies? Good question. Okay. So the males, uh, the whales reproduce just like we do. So um, it's internal reproduction. Um, it's exactly the same as us, except for it's happening in the water. Um, and typically two males will vie for dominance and then the one that wins will get to mate and the other male will, st will stay and help the mating process because remember they have to breathe air so they have to be kind of supported in the water. Um, How long is the pregnancy? The pregnancy is about a year so oh, it's estimated yeah. 11 to 13 months but average about a year. Um, and no, the males have no parental <laughs> care whatsoever. In fact, the female will mate with many whales in a, in a season. She'll mate with many whales in a season, and she doesn't really know which is the father, really. But so the father, the male whale, never knows if he's the father or not. So he's not going to put any energy into helping care for that um, because he doesn't really know if it's his baby. So he's his job is to mate with as many females and then go back to the feeding ground. Great question. Yeah. Very cool. And um, do the baby whales stay with their mothers the whole time or do the whales stay with their families? Uh, that's a great question. So in, in orcas, they stay with their family, with their grandmother, actually, for their entire lives. Um, with gray whales, um, they do not. So the babies will stay with their mom until they are weaned, which means the mom cuts the milk off at about seven to eight months. And then the gray whale is big enough to start learning how to feed on their there, own. There we go. There we go. And then they they do not stay with the mom after that. So they don't they don't have a family unit. Oh, nice. Oh, look right there. there. Oh, there we go. Come on, come on, come on up, come on up. Oh, there we go. <laughs> come on. Maybe there are two on. whales, guys. Oh, there's two whales. whales. Gonna fall in. That would be bad. <laughs> be against the law. How about right. another question? Any, any other questions? Oh, we had a camera flip. <laughs> there we go. We're back. All right. Um, let's see. We are wondering um how do whales sleep? Oh, how that's a good sleep? one. So whales are get right there. I think they're similar to dolphins, and the studies they've done on dolphins have shown that they turn off one part of their brain, half of their brain, um, at a time. So half of the brain is asleep, the other half is alert in case there's predators or they have to take a breath, and then that switches back and forth. So, and like I said, they've they've done the studies in dolphins in captivity, so they think that whales do the same thing, which is turn off half their brain to sleep, the other half is awake, and then that swaps back and forth. I think I do that sometimes. Yeah, I think you do it too. <laughs> you can see the flipper there. Yeah, yeah, right there. Come on. You can see the, the pattern on the flipper. How about something else, Kylie? All right. How big is a gray whale heart? Ooh, oh, a gray whale heart weighs 285 pounds. That's, That's even massive. bigger than you, Chris. I know, and I have a big heart. 285 pounds. A blue whale heart, for in co comparison, is 400 pounds. And our heart is about the size of our fist. So the, the gray whale heart is pretty darn large. And the reason why they have such a large heart is because they have a large body, of course, but also they have to pump a lot of blood through their body um, with each beat. And in fact, they can pump about 60 gallons of blood through their heart with every, every time the heart beats. It's coming up. Oh, it's coming up right there. Yeah. Hello. <laughs> Come all the way up. Oh. And that's the that's the blowhole right there. You can see the barnacles. You saw the the mouth a little bit on the far side. The mouth was closed. So beautiful, so beautiful. What else, Kylie? 
All righty. Let's see. We have a couple of really interesting questions. Um, somebody wants to know if it's true that whale guts explode when they die. <laughs> oh my, that is quite quite a tricky question. Okay, so okay, so let's back up for a second. So they they don't explode right when they die, but what happens is when a whale dies, when anything dies, uh, it starts to decompose. And in that process of decomposition, bacteria get in the body and they make what we call decomposition gases. And so once you have these decomposition gases and they're stuck in the blubber, in the skin of it, what happens is if you pop it, it can explode. But those exploding whales are, are, are really dead ones that have been dead for quite a while. And, uh, and it's those decomposition gases that are just putting pressure on the outside of the whale. So it's not like it dies and then explodes, if that makes sense. That was a great question. Really good question. Um, oh. Moses right wants, here. Oh, amazing. <laughs> uh, Moses wants to know what happens if a whale doesn't go to the surface to get air. Um, and someone else wondered, can they breathe underwater? Oh, right here. Uh, they cannot breathe underwater. They're just like us. We cannot breathe underwater either. Um, and so they would suffocate and die if they if they could not get to the if they could not get to the surface to breathe. And in fact, that was a nice. Yeah. Did you right, get that? Right, right in the face. Yeah. <laughs> so in fact, one of the issues with them getting caught in nets is that not only does it slow them down for swimming and waste the energy, but they can actually drown because if the net is, if the entanglement is keeping them from their blowholes getting to the surface, they will suffocate and drown just like we would if we got caught underwater. Oh, we're getting some bubbles. Sorry, Kylie, what'd you say? That's okay. On that note, how long can a gray whale hold its breath for? They can hold their breath for about up to 20 minutes when they're diving. But um, normally they're, they're, you know, they're kind of at the surface like we're seeing. So, you know, ten, we're seeing them like every 10 minutes, take a breath, something like that. Sometimes faster, but about 20 minutes. That is a very long time. Um, it is a long time. Speaking of long times, how long do oh. whales live? Oh yeah, good question. So these whales, these whales can live to be about um, seventy years old, but the longest living whale is the bowhead whale that has been clocked in at over two hundred years old. Wow, that is old. Two whales a year. Wow. Oh, nice. Anything else, Kylie? We have so many more. <laughs> um, <laughs> all right. Keep them coming. Yeah, they, they keep coming. Um, let's see. I want to pick a good one. Um, Marley in Anaheim wants to know if gray whales can dive into the abyss or do they just stay like in the twilight or the sunlight zones of the ocean? Well, gray whales are, remember, are shallow feeders. They really are only going to dive as deep as their food is. And so their food is really on the bottom. So they're not going to find food in the abyss. So they definitely don't. Uh, dive down that far so really the the maximum they've ever been clocked is about 400 feet and so they're really you know really in the in the twilight zone you know maybe that that's as deep as they go great question okay and we have about five minutes left so time for a couple more questions um okay. wants to know what do the whales feel like when they come up to the boat and you guys touch them oh my gosh it's heaven that's all i can say <laughs> it's heaven there's very soft, um, even though they have the barnacles on them, the skin itself is soft and it's pliable. So it's, it's, it's like, gushy. it's like touching a pillow almost a smooth, smooth pillow. I love it. Or like a boiled egg without the shell. Yeah, yeah boiled egg. egg, but nicer <laughs> though. Cause that's kind of slimy. They just feel, it feels like heaven. That's all I can tell you. Okay. Noted that whales feel like heaven. <laughs> uh, let's see. Liam wants to know uh, where he can go to see gray or to see whales in general, but let's say gray whales. Well, um, okay, so we have gray whales migrating along our coast every year um, between about uh, February and April ish. They're going right along the coast, and there's whale watches all along the coast. And if you can't actually go on a boat, um, oh, right here, um, you can actually go right on the land, like at uh, Palos Verdes Peninsula, and you can see the blows, and you can see them migrating along the coast. So right along our coast in California. 
and there's whale watches in lots of different places. So on the East Coast, they're known for their humpback whales. If you go to Alaska, they have a lot of killer whales. So lots of places to go see whales and, on a whale watch. Or you can come down and visit Scarlet. Exactly. And, <laughs> That's right. and then you'll get to pet a whale. Exactly. Yeah. Oh. Yes. Uh, we're getting the I whole, love the pattern on this one's tail. Love that pattern. It reminds me of trilobites. So graceful in the on there. Yeah. I wish I was that graceful. <laughs> what else do you got for us, Kylie? Gwen, we, uh, speaking of patterns, do the barnacles stay with them their entire lives or do they leave? Wait, sorry. I couldn't hear you. There was bubbles happening. That's okay. Uh, speaking of the patterns, do the barnacles yeah. leave or do they stay uh -huh. their whole life? Uh, so, uh, so the barnacles, well, they the barnacles don't live that long and the whales live to be, you know, like 50, 60 years old. So the barnacles do fall off and the whales also rub them off. So um, so they they do come off. So the barnacles are not on there for the whole life of the whale, but different barnacles will, will different barnacles will come on there. So they're constantly kind of losing and gaining new barnacles, if that makes sense. Very cool. Um, Ezekiel wants to know, how do you know when a whale is happy or not? Oh. Oh. Um, they smile. I'm not really sure, but we know when they're mad because they do, they they would, you know, in the day they would attack boats and things like that. Um, we, we we don't really know if they're happy. It's really hard to to determine that. But I mean, some of them seem happy when they come to the boat and they let us rub them and they come back over and over again. That seems, to, you know, to be happy, but but there's no real definitive answer on that one. All right. Marley wants to know, um, do gray whales sing and how loud? And a couple other people were wondering, how do the gray whales talk to each other? Uh, that's a great question. They do not sing. So they, they're they not like humpback whales with those elaborate songs. They do make sounds, grunts, whistles, knocks, um, things like that. Um, but in, but they, and that's how they communicate with each other, but they also communicate with body language and the spy hopping and splashing the water, um, but they do not sing. All right. And would you guys consider the gray whales to be dangerous? No. <laughs> I mean, they uh, or they, they could boat? be, but you know, we're not, we don't feel at all in danger here, even though they're under the boat. And really in reality, they could lift us up out of the water if they wanted to, or slap us with their tails, but they're, they're very, very docile and very curious. They're mammals, very intelligent. Um, so no, I would not, I would not consider them to be dangerous. Right. Yes. Yeah, so they're definitely curious. I mean, we we're just sitting here. We're not going yeah. anywhere, and they're actually coming up to us. Right. So over and over. Everywhere we turn, there's a whale, curious, coming over, checking it out. Almost like we're in a backwards there's zoo. Right there. So there's we're the we're the animals in the cages or the boat in this case, and they're coming over to check us out. All right. Let's finish with this final question. Oh, there's dolphins next to that whale. Right there's next to that whale. Are right by that whale over there. That's so cool. See the dolphin fins, yep. and then the whale is right behind it. It's like yeah. little entourage. <laughs> yeah, that's so crazy. All right, guys. Anything final question anything? from Ezekiel: uh, Do whales excrete or poop? We'll yes, finish. they do. Everybody poops. <laughs> Everybody, Everybody poops. Everybody poops. So yes, they when they eat, um, you know, not so much here in the lagoon because they're really not eating that much. But when they're up in Alaska, they do poop. Um, it's more like a liquid uh, that comes out. Um, not really like human poop. But yes, they have to poop when they eat, and the babies will poop because they're eating um the milk, right? So, but again, it's a lot more liquidy. Also, a brown. Oh, oh my gosh, they have Spy up two inches from the boat. <laughs> oh my gosh. It was right here. Wow. Such a bummer. It was so crazy. It was like, wow. Its head was right here. That was amazing. One, two, all oh, out of life. Three there. Three. Wow. Oh. <laughs> They're digging us now. Ooh. Wow, that was so exciting. That was so exciting. Come on. Oh, it's going to let me touch it. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Yes. Hello. 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 Hello.
Yeah. You got to scratch its nose. You know, oh, oh, more pets, more pets. Wow, look at the size of that mouth. Wow. It's coming back. It's coming oh, back. Oh, no. Yep. Oh. Oh. Scarlet yeah. gets to pet. Oh, everybody gets to pet. Look, look at the eye, guys. Look at the eye. Oh, look at the eye. Oh, 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 she's pushing a little bit. Huh? She's pushing, guys. Oh. Yes. Wow. Hey, she's still there. Hang me now. Do you want to come home with me? All right. Me? You know what? I love sharks, <laughs> but this is kind of cool. This is the coolest. I'm sorry. Come on back up. Come on. I'll scratch your nose. So, Kylie, we're going to have to probably wrap yeah. things up. <laughs> Because we're we have to move because you're only allowed a certain amount of time in this area. So we need to give the whales a break. And they've put us, they've given us a great show today. They're hanging out by us. Hopefully, you got to see some whales up yeah. close. You got to learn something about whales today. So we want to thank you for tuning in. Um, we'll be able to answer some of your questions via email. Right. So if you have more questions that we didn't get to answer, send them to us and we'll answer those. So we want to thank everybody. We want to thank our guide today. Hola, Dios, guys. I want to thank our captain, Adrian. Adrian. And, and, and we've got to, we've got to thank our cameraman extraordinaire, Dan. And good old Dr. Goodman Lowe for teaching us so much. Thank you. So thank you, everybody. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in today. Um, just like uh, Dr. Lowe said, we will be sending out an email after this. We'll answer some of the questions that we weren't able to get to. Um, we had over a hundred questions. There were so many. I know that certain people's questions didn't, uh, could, we didn't have time to answer them. Um, so feel free to email us your questions, but we will send out answers to your questions after this, as well as some extra learning material. Um, thank you again so much for tuning in and uh, we loved having you and we'll see you guys on the next uh, Ocean Lab show. Thanks for joining us. Here you go, here you go. Okay. Awesome. awesome. Home run, Captain. Oh my God. Oh, so Scarlet, Scarlet. <laughs> <laughs>